me. So, welcome back to, oh, wait. <laughs> Ooh. Welcome back to another episode of Tea in a Chat. Today I'm doing another advice episode. I asked you guys on my community tab here on YouTube to ask me for advice about friendship because we all have friends and we all seem to have a lot of trouble with them, me included. Don't know if I'm very verified. Verified. I did recently just get verified on YouTube. Look at that gray check mark. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, I don't really know if I'm qualified to give advice on best friends because I've had so many troubles throughout the years. But Maybe it's like a you live and you learn type thing. I don't know. But before we get in the video, I just wanted to mention this episode's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Yode Watches. If you didn't already tell, I got this fancy bad boy right here on my wrist right now. Yode Watches are 100% wood watches. Here's my really old one in this really old case. And then here is my new one that came in this lovely updated wooden box. Look at that bad boy. I got this really cute like natural wood colored one with this gold detailing on it. Actually, the time is wrong. I probably should fix that. I'm not one person who really uses a watch, but I like to wear them because I think that they're fancy. If you like this watch and you want to get one for yourself, you can use the code TWINBUNS to get 25% off your order as well as free custom sizing. So yeah, that will be in the description if you want to use it. You want one of these watches, but you can't afford it. I'm actually doing a giveaway of one of these watches of your choice from the Yod website, and there will be a link in the description for you to enter. The only rule is that you have to be subscribed to me. You can click the thing below, fill out everything, and enter. And if you win, Yod will contact you and send you a cute little watch. Hmm, you know what time it is? I think it's about time that we started this video. How do you find genuine friends? This can be super hard, and you don't really know if a friend is genuine until you've already had them be your friend for a while. Um, but a good way to find friends that you will actually get along with and in the long run actually be, you know, good friends is to find people who have a lot of stuff in common with you. I know that definitely helps. If you're in school, you can join a club and that will definitely help with making friends that have similar interests with you. But one of the hardest things is to find actual genuine friends because you won't really know that they're genuine until they become disingenuine which I've known someone for 10 years and they became not a genuine friend after 10 years and I totally would have considered them a genuine like best friend for those 10 years but now we don't speak so like it's very hard you just have to learn to put your trust in people and just look the best out of your best friend if you do have a good judge in character though it's pretty easy to judge like who's gonna be like a backstabbing evil person later in the future and who's not but you never know no, it's really just like a trust thing. If you like trust your friends that they're gonna be there for life, you never know. Yes, it's very hard to find genuine friends. I have a couple genuine friends right now, but who knows if in 10 years they will still be like my genuine like best friends. I have a friend that has a bad influence on me and other people. She makes me do things I don't want to do and many of my best friends have the same feelings about her. What shall I do? I feel like this is very common, especially among younger people who are in like middle school, uh, beginning of high school. Um, probably more like middle school, maybe even elementary, um, 13, 14 years old, where there's one friend in the group who might be more mature or might have like more relaxed parents and they can just basically do a lot more mature things at an older age. Now I'm not sure if this is what you're really talking about, but like usually when <laughs> a friend can have a bad influence on you, which means they can make you drink, do drugs, steal, skip curfew, sneak out, those types of things. And and if all of your friends in your friend group are feeling this way and you all are hanging out and this one friend is like, this is totally an example because I don't know if this is a situation, but if this one friend is like, hey, let's go get drunk, guys. Um, if like all of you guys are like, how about we just go back to my place and watch a movie? I'm pretty sure your friend would rather hang out with you guys and not get drunk than just go off by herself and get drunk. In that situation, of course, I have no clue what your actual situation is with the, what she's influencing you to do, like cheating on tests. I don't even know if you're in school, I'm just assuming. But if you and all your friends just stand up to her and say, hey, like, we don't really want to do that, that's not really our thing, it's up to her whether she will accept that or not, and if she doesn't, maybe you're better off not having her be your friend, because I do not drink, I do not do drugs, I do not do any of that, and my friends all do. <laughs> I mean, they don't, like, do drugs, but, like, you know, they smoke weed and stuff like that. They are always like, well, I don't get why you don't do that, but, like, I'm not gonna make you do that. But they know that I do not, and they respect that, and they are genuinely 
friendly, my true friends. So if your friend is trying to get you to do something like that, she's not really your true friend. She doesn't have you in her best interest and your friend should always have you in their best interest. How do you deal with a close friend leaving? My best friend is moving away for college after graduation and I feel like I'll be lost without him. It for sure is not going to be the same once he leaves and everyone in life will have to experience this whether you're in high school and your friends are graduating or you're an adult and your friends are getting married and moving away or their jobs are taking them somewhere else. Stuff like this always happens. And the best way that I can relay how you're going to feel when your friend moves away for the first couple days is, do you know in high school when you eat like lunch with the same friends every day or like me being a loner, one single friend <laughs> and that friend isn't at school that day. Like they're absent, they're sick, who knows, they're just not there. And you just wander around lunch and you feel really weird. You don't really feel like you fit. You don't really feel like you have a place to go. You feel very alone. That's how it'll feel when your friend leaves. It will get better over time. I have moved a lot in my school years. I moved in fourth grade to a new school and then I also moved after fifth grade to a new school and then I moved from ninth grade to a new school and then I stopped going to school. <laughs> so I went to a bunch of different schools and I was always having to leave friends behind. Luckily, we live in 2018. There is communication that is not face to face. I FaceTime my friends every day. I currently do not have one friend that lives in my state. I don't hang out with friends ever. I haven't hung out with friends since December. Like I haven't just chilled in my house with friends since December. Let that sink in. It's May. It's been four months since I've had human contact with someone my own age, really, <laughs> that was like a friend. I just FaceTime my friends every day. You can always Skype, you can always FaceTime, you can always text, like you're not gonna feel like they're gone and they've disappeared off the planet, but it is gonna be weird, but you will get through it. And just plan to meet up. That's how me and my friends do it. We're like, okay, like me and my friends, we're planning a vacation in like a month. And like, we're like, yeah, we're so excited. And we always seem like such close friends whenever we're planning a trip. So yeah, just, you know, try to visit each other. Everything will be okay. Life goes on, you'll still be friends. How do you confront your best friend knowing that they have spread rumors behind your back? If they truly are your best friend, then you should be able to just sit them down and be like, hey, I heard you told Jessica that I only wear the color green underwear. And then you gotta be like, okay, like you can't go around telling people stuff and spreading rumors and like telling lies about me. If you do that and it stops, that's great. Maybe they were just a little misguided or they didn't realize that what they were doing was bad, even though that's, Probably not the case, but if they do keep doing it after you confront them and say like, hey, listen, you can't be telling everyone in school that I'm pregnant by my cousin, that's not fair. Um, You probably should stop being friends with them because like I said earlier, if a friend does not have your best interest in heart, they are not really your best friend. That does not mean cut them out of your life completely. That does not mean that you have to shut them out, block them on all social media and never talk to them again, but just take a step back and remove yourself and maybe they'll realize like, hey, I'm being a dick right now. Maybe if I wasn't spreading rumors about my friend, she would still be in my life, you know? Best friend has a boyfriend and we were all good friends before they dated, but now I'm getting left out of everything and I feel like I'm getting ganged up on too. What do I do? I relate to this so hard because I used to have a friend, we're gonna call her Charla, okay? I, I used to have a friend and whenever me and Charla would fight, it would be because she would get a boyfriend and would take all of her attention away from me. Looking back at this now, I was really just jealous of Charla's boyfriends because I liked having my friends. I've always liked having my friends to myself because I've never had a group of friends before. I've always just been like a one-on-one -on -one type friend person. So really basically I just don't know how to share. But like we would only be friends when Charla was single and then the second she would get a boyfriend we would get in like a huge fight and our friendship would end for like six months or however long the relationship lasted. And this is 100% like a jealousy thing. Like sure they probably are shutting you out a little bit, like they're not hanging out with you as much, but you have to keep in mind that your friend is in a relationship now. And in the way of things that work, I know in your head you want it to be like, okay, friendships are here and boyfriends are like here, but in reality in your friend's mind it's probably like boyfriend's here, friendship is like right here. Even though within time, once they're dating this person for a long time, it should be able to even out. But when you first start dating someone, all you want to do is hang out with them all the time. It super sucks, I know, but you just have to try and let them 
have their me time. They are still in their honeymoon phase. They're new in a relationship and they just want to be alone. Try and think of it if it was you, if you got a boyfriend, would you want your friend hanging out with you 24 seven? They're bound to hang out and not invite you. I know it sucks that you were all friends before and now they have moved into this little like closer friend group than you but it happens and you just have to try to keep in mind that like this is her boyfriend now. It's not like they're just friends hanging out and excluding you, it's her boyfriend. How to distance yourself from toxic friendships slash how to recognize one. I have for sure been in so many toxic friendships in my life to the point where me and said friend were both miserable and it's super hard to identify that friendship when you're in it but I've always noticed that when I take a step back from it I always realize like how bad things were and then sometimes I'm always like you try to remember the good parts you try to remember the good parts when you're thinking about your friendship the last thing you want to do is be thinking about all the bad things that happen in it I know I do this where I'm like thinking about my friendship and I'm thinking totally just about all the fun times we've had all the concerts we've gone to all the crazy things we've done but then I got to try and think back to all all the bad things that have happened like how she would make me feel bad for being pretty or feel bad for having nice things that I've worked for for myself or even I've had a friend that would make me feel bad for getting YouTube PR packages because I would get free stuff and they wouldn't which is like I don't I don't know what to say I'm a youtuber you're not there's not really anything I can do about it I'll I give you some stuff that I don't use but I wouldn't accept the PR email if I didn't want it. Like, I've had friends like that, and I've removed them all from my life, and it is great. But it's just like, noticing those little things that your friends do that are in your best interest is really a good way to notice like when a friendship isn't working. All my friends hang out with each other, but never ask me to hang out or talk about it. I'm always the one who asks, and most of the time I get rejected. Camera readjustment, my feet fell asleep. Ugh, they're so red. Friends like that suck, and this is, I sucked, okay, this is, okay, that sounded really weird. When I was in middle school, like seventh and eighth grade, there was this girl, we're gonna call her Hannah. Hannah lived in like a very like suburban, like really nice neighborhood. And the school that I went to, and including myself, None of us really lived in really nice neighborhoods or anything like that. We all kind of lived in like the middle of nowhere in like trailers and stuff like that. She had these very strict parents and she was raised very differently than us. So like she couldn't watch the movie Jackass and she couldn't watch like TV shows like Degrassi and Gossip Girl because she was very sheltered. And she was our friend, sure. We hung out with Hannah all the time at school. She sat with us at lunch. She was a great girl. Um, she currently works at this Mexican restaurant that I go to all the time and I see her all the time and it's great. But in middle school, for instance, at my friend's 14th birthday party, it was kind of like a last minute thing and we were all in the car and we were like, should we invite Hannah? And we were like, no, because later we're gonna go on MySpace and we're gonna look at like guys profiles and stuff. And we were like, we probably shouldn't invite Hannah because Hannah's not allowed to have a MySpace. Or, oh no, we shouldn't invite Hannah because her parents will probably like make her go home at like eight o'clock or like Hannah won't let us watch Jackass the movie, like stuff like that. And we just wouldn't invite her. And, like she would invite us over to her house and we'd be like, oh no, sorry, because we know that her parents try to feed us like carrot sticks and like vegan apple juice. <laughs> we liked Hannah, but we excluded her. And like, that was horrible of us, but like looking back at it, like we wouldn't known any better. We were little kids. So like, uh, I don't know, man. It's a tough situation because like, if you say you've already like tried to invite people, that was my first instinct to give you advice was be like, you instigate the pens, be like, hey guys, do you wanna to go to the mall? Do you wanna do this? So that way they can't uninvite you. But if you're already doing it, it sounds like these people are just dicks, man. It sounds like they're not really your friends and you should try to find people that actually want to hang out with you. Because people that don't actually want to be around you are not worth your time to waste trying to get them to want to hang out with you. Okay, two more. I have a friend that I was best friends with in 2012. We were friends until 2016 until she decided to drip away from me. We talk very rarely now. However, she doesn't seem to have a lot of close friends anymore, as in everyone has told me, and she seems so bored and sad all the time. I really want to be your friend again because she was one of my best friends. I've never had, I've ever had, but I'm too afraid to approach her, plus my other friends don't like her for some reason. Health. This is a common thing for sure. If you guys aren't friends for any reason in particular, you just sort of drifted apart and you're noticing now that this girl, I'm assuming it's a girl, right? I don't know, you're deciding this person is 
sad and you see them just like moping around school all alone and even people have told you that this person is alone they probably are pretty lonely and don't have many friends and if you guys were close friends I don't think your friends not liking her should stop you from being her friend again that doesn't mean that you have to go back to being her best friend and hanging out with her all the time and like ditching your other friends that you've clearly made now even just like reaching out to her on like Facebook or texting her and just keeping a line of conversation open to show that you're there would probably help with her loneliness and if you guys just start talking you're inevitably gonna become friends and yeah don't listen to what your friends think also if your friends are like oh my god why are you friends with a loner just be like guys shut up I can be friends with whoever I want that was definitely a thing that was in my high school it was like oh my god you can't be friends with Tiffany because Tiffany pushed me in the sandbox in fifth grade and I hate Tiffany it's like guys I can be friends with Tiffany if I want to be friends with Tiffany, okay? It's so dumb. It's just a high school, like middle school thing. In the real world, that's not real. Last one. <laughs> I have a best friend and we're really close. He's so sweet and nice to me and we're very affectionate towards each other. I don't want to start having a crush on him. How do I avoid that without distancing myself? Distancing, that's a big word. <laughs> this is such a difficult situation because any situation where there's like a friend falling in love with another friend is like so crazy because you don't know it's hard. You don't know how to work the situation. Although to me, if you're asking how to avoid getting a crush on this guy, it seems like you probably already think somewhere in your brain that you do have a crush on him. Because if you're like, oh my god, how do I not have a crush on him? I mean, <laughs> you probably have a crush on him. I don't know if that's weird for me to think that, but like, I don't just think like, I don't just think about my friend and I'm like, god, I hope I don't ever have a crush on you because like, I don't know, that's just not something you think about with your friends. And it is super, super difficult to avoid catching feelings if you're with this person all the time and you said you didn't want to distance yourself. So if I was in this situation, which I've never been in this situation, um, mm, no, yeah, I've never been in this situation. I would try to put them in a box in your head, like a metaphorical box. So like, imagine you have three boxes in your head. One is for family, one is for friends, and one is for crushes. Clearly you can't keep him in the friend box because you can obviously develop feelings on friends. So I try to put him in the like, hey, this is my brother, this is my cousin, this is my mom type feeling. And I know that can be hard because it seems like you already have feelings for him, but like you gotta try and like, friend zone him in your mind like he is completely unavailable he is your brother he is your cousin it's a big eh. just try to like not think of him in that way at all or else like if you do end up developing feelings for him and you don't and he doesn't feel the same way and you don't want to ruin the friendship it's good to just you know Skadoodle on out for a bit, come back in when you've adjusted your feelings. Or you could just tell him and hope that he's like, oh no, sorry fam, not interested. And then you're like, okay, cool, let's go get pizza, you know? But that's in a perfect scenario. I don't know if that would actually work in real life. Okay guys, that is it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Just a reminder to please be sure to check out Yode watches in the description below. Use the coupon code TWINBUNS so you get 25% off and free custom sizing on your order and enter the giveaway. I love these watches and I think they are super cute and they come in these really cute boxes which I really like. My dad even has one of these watches. He has a blackwood one that he wears all the time. It's super cute. If you like this video and you want your advice to be answered in the next segment of this series, um, all you have to do is subscribe to me and keep an eye out for my community posts because that is where I ask for advice. If you want to submit a topic below that I should talk about in one of these series, please feel free to comment it below and I will look through this when I want to film another one. But yeah, if this is your first time seeing my videos, please remember to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. If you actually like this video, please remember to like it by clicking the thumbs up. If you are subscribed already and you have not yet, click the bell below to turn on my notifications so that you're notified when I post that you can actually enjoy my content. Join the party. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next episode. Bye guys! Mwah! Ah!